Last week, co-working behemoth and former stock market darling WeWork filed for bankruptcy, going from a $47 billion valuation to, at the moment, $93 million and change. As the old joke goes, how do you make a small fortune? You start with a large fortune and invest in commercial real estate. That $47 billion wipeout would make WeWork a standout poster child for the Fed-induced malinvestment I've talked about in recent videos, where near zero interest rates launch a tissue fire of easy money, one that burns bright, but sadly burns out fast. WeWork's charred investors include famous Japanese mega investor Masayoshi Son, who made his money cloning Japanese versions of dot coms in the 90s, but now is mostly famous for losing obscene amounts of money chasing meme companies. The larger issue, though, is what this means for commercial real estate. Before its bankruptcy, WeWork had renegotiated 590 commercial leases in dozens of cities, summing to $12.7 billion in future rent payments. Those are now gone. They've already said they'll cancel 69 leases with hundreds to come. By the way, U.S. bankruptcy law gives debtors enormous leverage to walk away from leases, sticking landlords and their banks with the bill. As Zero Hedge put it, WeWork could be the straw that breaks the camel's back of commercial real estate, which is already being savaged by the Fed's rate hikes together with post-pandemic work from home and the post-apocalyptic mismanagement of America's cities by its proud socialists. So what's next? Brought to you by Unchained. What's next is commercial real estate is a potentially fatal risk for hundreds of banks across America, particularly the regional banks, the very outfits that set off the bank runs back in March, starting with Silicon Valley, then Signature and First Republic, all at the time among the top 50 banks in the United States. Those failures were triggered by losses in treasuries, government debt, after the Fed's rate hikes, but the losses in commercial real estate could be even larger, certainly as a percent of the loans. One recent analysis by FX Hedge put commercial loans at regional banks at roughly $300 billion, making up about 30% of their balance sheets. In many cities, those loans have lost half or more of their value. Some are down to a third. This is already strangling regional bank lending as they hoard cash. But as analyst Luke Groman warns, even if regional banks can handle those losses, they'll likely have to sell off their treasuries, which would add yet another seller to a very crowded gang selling federal debt into an abyss. Gang that includes China, Japan, Saudi Arabia, and even the Federal Reserve itself. If that happens, it could drive interest costs on federal debt far beyond the current trillion odd that Uncle Sam is set to pay this year on top of a couple trillion fresh deficit. So what's the solution? Two options. First, the degenerates who wrong American cities could miraculously come to their senses, clean up their towns and entice businesses to return. Or only slightly more likely, tens of thousands of vacant offices could be converted into housing, filling America's abandoned skyscrapers with condos and apartments. That is apparently a lot harder than it looks, given local rules including union mandates that can hold up conversions for years. But absent that, we could be in for a collapse in commercial real estate that could set off a banking domino echoing the 2008 crisis. Okay, we'll be watching. See you next time.